Hello, welcome to the second installment in our fractal assignments. Uh, we're going to discuss today the Cook curve, how to create one, and uh, what it looks like. So let's get started. Our first lesson discussed fractals um, in nature, uh, specifically trees, and so I thought I would start by showing you some examples of trees and branching and their fractal nature. And there are all sorts of examples of fractals in nature. Here's a picture of some spirals. I think this is from uh, cauliflower, which is a really cool example. If you pick up cauliflower at the store, uh, take a look at it and you can see these kind of nested spirals, spirals of spirals. And another example is coastlines. So I, I found these pictures on Google Earth. This is a uh, part of the coastline of Ireland, I believe. So you see here um, kind of a distinctive coastline shape, very uh, full of folds and wrinkles. And if we pick one small portion of that coast and zoom in, we see another coastline with lots of folds and wrinkles and to a degree similar to the original uh, shape and size. And we can pick another little point on this zoomed in coastline and zoom in again. And we find another coastline full of crinkles and folds. And again, it's kind of similar to that very first picture. Of course, we're much more zoomed in now. And we can do that even at a more detailed level, level. You can see now that we're down to the level where we can see the individual waves. And you can see even more folds and crinkles that you couldn't see at a higher level of detail. And of course, if we kept zooming in down to the level of the individual rocks, we could even see more and more detail the further we zoomed in. So it's got that kind of nature of a fractal where the further you zoom in, the more detail there is. Um, obviously, with a real coastline, we'll eventually reach some kind of limit of detail. Um, but in a mathematical fractal, the idea is that there's an infinite amount of detail. So here is a Cook curve. You can liken it to a coastline in that it's full of little folds and crinkles. And at a high level of detail, you can see all these things. But the further you zoom in, the, the more detail you see. And there's an, an endless amount of it. And you can see that this is a very regular shape as opposed to what you are seeing in the irregular coastline. Its regular shape is what's going to make it easy for us to code. So let me first describe the features of the Cook curve um, by going through the multiple levels of fractal. We'll start with the depth one fractal, which is just one line segment. Now a depth two curve basically contains four depth one curves and it adds that bend that I put in red. Um, and the key thing to know about the, the shape of this curve is that all these uh, bends are created at uh, 60 degree angles. And if I were to add that, um, that missing line on the bottom, it would create an equilateral triangle. And that's simply important because it helps us to understand what the lengths of these line segments are going to be. So we take our level 1 curve we shrink it and we repeat it four times and that gives us our level two curve. Our level three curve, our depth three fractal, is basically just four level two curves repeated in the same pattern. Likewise, our depth four curve contains four depth three curves. And then finally, depth five contains four depth four curves. Uh, or a total of 256 line segments. So here now is our pseudocode algorithm. To make a Cook curve, you're going to draw a straight line if the depth is zero, and then otherwise you're going to draw four smaller Cook curves. So we need to go from that to actual uh, code in Java. I've now switched to Java coding mode, and let's go ahead and program the 
method for a Cook curve. Just like our tree fractal, it's going to have two arguments, one for depth and one for size. And let's program our base case first. Uh, recall, if you will, that the base case was, if depth is zero, we draw a simple line segment. Otherwise, we need to draw four smaller curves. Now, if you recall from our previous picture, the four smaller curves are in relationship to the larger curve exactly one-third the size. Because if you drew that bottom line on the equilateral triangle, all those lines would be the same length and therefore the, that that bottom line segment would essentially be divided into three parts. So the relationship is always a third of the length. So that means we will do the following. Now we need to turn, and specifically we need to turn to uh, create that next side. That's going to be a left turn. And then draw our next Cook curve. Now we need to turn again. This time right turn to point back down. We draw our third Cook curve and we turn left again to, dr to draw the final one. So the thing to keep in mind about this particular fractal, which is different from our tree, is to notice that for each of these fractals, the contract that we need to fulfill, or the assumption that we need to fulfill, as opposed to the trees where the turtle started and ended at the bottom of the tree, is that the turtle starts at the leftmost end and ends at the rightmost end. And so when it draws a line segment, it starts at the left, ends at the right. When it draws the depth 2 curve, we need to assume that it will also start at the left and end at the right. And the only way that you can draw a depth 2 curve is by drawing four depth 1 curves. And again, you notice that in order to draw a depth 2 curve, you need to be able to guarantee that your turtle starts at the left and ends at the right of each of the lower level curves. So for instance, the depth 3, we rely on the fact that when you draw a depth 2 curve, you start on the left side of the curve and end on the right so that you're ready to draw the next uh, depth 2 curve going up and then the following one and the following one. So now let's go ahead and make a main method to test this out. So let's start with a simple level 1 curve, just to make sure that we've gotten everything down correctly. Uh, I see the mistake that I made. Um, I am assuming that 
a depth zero curve. And so I'm starting with a depth zero curve instead of a depth one curve. That's the computer scientist in me. Um, honestly, typically I would probably do a depth zero as the base case, but to be consistent with the previous examples, previous problems, let's use depth one to be the uh, the base case. So let's try that again. So that's our depth one. Now let's try a depth two. Okay, let's try a depth six. And voila, our Cook curve. 